I'm Dr. Meletius Dimopoulos from Athens, Greece, and uh, I, I will uh, present uh, recent data on how to extend the survival of myeloma patients at relapse. These are my disclosures. We know that uh, myeloma patients uh, uh, receive subsequent lines of therapy according to the first line treatment. So we have several patients uh, who have received uh, an immunomodulatory based uh, uh, drug at the time, uh, combination at the time of induction. And uh, these are regimens that these patients can receive at the time of progression, namely bortezomib dexamethasone or calfizomib dexamethasone or combinations based on uh, daratumumab. Fewer patients today are progressing on a bortezomib-based induction. Most of the patients have a bortezomib-free interval, but when this occurs, these patients should be treated with, uh, uh, with lenalidomide and imid-based combinations. Uh, we will review some of the older studies that have established uh, uh, modern treatment uh, as standard of care. And this is the main endpoint of the ASPIRE trial. In this trial, patients were randomized to receive lenalidomide and dexamethasone with or without calfizomib. And uh, we saw that uh, patients who received the triplet uh, had uh, an improvement in the progression-free survival of about nine months. And this was translated also in uh, uh, an overall survival uh, advantage. The Pollux trial uh, compared lenalidomide and uh, dexamethasone with or without aratumumab in patients who had received uh, uh, one to three prior, prior lines of therapy. Uh, and this trial showed that there was a very significant improvement in uh, progression-free survival with a median of 45 months in favor of uh, uh, the combination. Furthermore, in this particular trial, there was a prospective assessment uh, of uh, 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 minimal residual disease. And uh, uh, as we can appreciate, there is a significant improvement uh, in uh, improvement of progression of uh, minimal residual disease negativity. Uh, uh, after six months and also sustained after 12 months uh, in favor of the triplet combination. Another agent that has been evaluated in the uh, relapse uh, setting of myeloma is uh, exazomib, an oral proteasome inhibitor. And uh, we know that the combination of exazomib with lenalidomide and dexamethasone was associated with a higher uh, response rate and progression-free survival. Elotuzumab uh, was the first uh, monoclonal antibody uh, used uh, successfully in the treatment of myeloma. And these are long-term results of the ELOCON2 trial, which compared uh, elotuzumab with lenalidomide dexamethasone versus lenalidomide dexamethasone. And we know that there was uh, a modest but sustained improvement of progression-free survival. And this translated in a modest but statistically significant survival advantage. This table summarizes all the lenalidomide-based studies in myeloma, calfizomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, daratumab, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, ixazomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, and ilotuzumab, lenalidomide, dexamethasone. And since uh, there is no prospective study that has uh, compared uh, these uh, three, these uh, novel combinations, one can go back to the original uh, trials and uh, evaluate inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, in order to be able to choose among these regimens. For example, uh, for patients. Uh, uh, who, have, who are refractory to lenalidomide, uh, they should be excluded from KRD, they should be excluded from ILO-RD and from Ixazomib-RD and DAR-RD, 
because these patients were not included in this trial. However, they can be treated with uh, calfizumab, dexamethasone, or DARA-PT. Lenalidomide refractoriness is becoming a major uh, problem in the management of patients with myeloma, not only because uh, almost uh, all patients at the time of relapse, they receive lenalidomide-based combinations, but also because there is an increasing number of patients receiving uh, lenalidomide maintenance after high-dose therapy or lenalidomide continuous treatment. Uh, we uh, wanted to evaluate uh, uh, several uh, patients who were lenalidomide refractory and received uh, the same combination with pomalidomide and low-dose dexamethasone. So in this retrospective analysis, we saw that uh, the dose of lenalidomide, the last dose of lenalidomide, uh, that the patient progressed on did not have a major impact in uh, the outcome of the patients. Uh, and also, uh, uh, it appeared that patients who uh, had received lenalidomide for more than 12 months had a better outcome than patients who progressed on lenalidomide before 12 months. And also, if there was an image free interval between Lenalidomide and pomalidomide, and this interval was more than 18 months. This was associated with an improved outcome. What is the standard of care today for lenalidomide refractory patients? We have two studies that indicate that calfizomib and dexamethasone and DARA, tumumab, abortezomib, and dexamethasone are associated with uh, uh, a PFS uh, uh, of about uh, 9 to 10 months. So clearly, this is a, a suboptimal outcome. The OPTIMIST trial was recently published. In this particular trial, patients with relapsed myeloma, one to three prior lines of therapy, uh, were randomized to receive either bortezomib dexamethasone or bortezomib dexamethasone with pomalidomide. All these patients uh, were pretreated with lenalidomide, and a significant number of patients were lenalidomide resistant. This is the outcome regarding progression-free survival, the primary endpoint of the study. And we can appreciate that PVD was associated with uh, uh, a reduced risk of progression and death uh, by almost 40% compared uh, to VD, with a median PFS of 11.2 months versus 7.1 months uh, in VD. And if one restricts the analysis in patients who have received only one prior line of therapy, uh, you can appreciate that with PVD, the PFS now is uh, almost 21 months versus 12 months for VD. And uh, the uh, important question of what would be the activity of POMVD in patients who are uh, resistant, who progress on lenalidomide, you can see here, uh, that for all patients, the median PFS is 9.5, and for, for patients who have received only one prior line of therapy, it is 17.8 months. So there is some improvement versus uh, the reports uh, from uh, older studies. The counter trial <coughs> has been recently reported. In this particular trial, uh, patients with uh, relapsed refractory myeloma, one to three prior lines of therapy, uh, received uh, uh, on a two to one ratio either calfizomib, dexamethasone, uh, and daratumumab, or calfizomib and uh, dexamethasone. The main finding of the study is shown here. There is a significant improvement in progression free survival uh, in favor of uh, KD with daratumumab versus the control arm. Uh, and also, this was uh, even more pronounced uh, in patients who uh, were uh, lenalidomide exposed and lenalidomide refractory, indicating that this is a very potent combination for these patients. Overall survival data are yet uh, not mature. However, there is a trend for an overall survival advantage. What are the factors that influence our decision? Uh, to select uh, a, a treatment in the relapse setting. Uh, it is uh, the uh, uh, risk according to cytogenetic abnormalities. 
uh, standard or high risk. And here you can see the data with uh, uh, KRD and DARRD, uh, and also with Ixazomib RD and ELRD. In almost all the studies, there is a, a, a partial improvement of the outcome of patients with high risk cytogenetics when they're treated with the novel uh, combination. So the monoclonal uh, antibodies uh, now, especially anti cd 38 monoclonal antibodies are moving to, early, to earlier lines of therapy. So we are facing and will be facing an increasing number of patients who will be uh, progressing not only on lenalidomide, but also on anti cd 38 monoclonal antibody. So we are in need to develop combinations to address these patients. Uh, the combination of elotuzumab with pomalidomide and dexamethasone uh, has shown a significant improvement over POMDEX in patients with uh, a relapse and refractory myeloma who have received the median of three lines of therapy, and uh, this combination was very well tolerated. Another combination that may be suitable for the type of patients who progress on lalidomide and aratumumab is the calfizumab, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone combination, uh, which uh, uh, was associated with a median PFS from 10 uh, to 12 months, and also with respect to uh, survival. Isatuximab with pomalidomide and dexamethasone, the, uh, in the Icaria trial, showed uh, superiority over POMDEX, uh, not only for PFS, but also for overall survival. And uh, today, we have new uh, 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 image, the so-called cell mods, uh, which uh, are uh, appear to be active even in patients who are, who are image refractory and also patients who have progressed uh, on uh, deratumba, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone. Selinexor is another agent that has shown activity as a single agent uh, and in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone, uh, has been associated uh, with a significant number of responses in, in uh, patients with far advanced disease. Venetoclax is uh, an important uh, new agent for the treatment of myeloma, especially for patients with uh, translocation 1114. This is uh, the, Bellini, the design of the Bellini trial, which compared uh, Bortezomib, dexamethasone, uh, and uh, placebo versus bortezomib, dexamethasone, and venetoclax in patients uh, uh, with relapsed uh, myeloma. And uh, the findings of the study are quite interesting. There was an overall progression free survival for all patients. This was more pronounced for patients with 1114 translocation or high expression of PCL2 whereas the overall survival appeared to be better for bortezomib and dexamethasone if one takes into consideration all patients without any significant survival difference for patients with 1114 or high PCA2. Moving to monoclonal uh, uh, drug conjugates, we have belantamab mafodotin, who is in the more advanced phase of development. This is a humanized IgG uh, anti-BCMA uh, antibody conjugated to uh, our statin. And we already have data from a randomized phase two study showing approximately a 60% response rate, including a 40% response rate in patients who have failed aratumumab and a PFS from eight to 10 months. And finally, uh, a, a treatment uh, with uh, CAR T cells, uh, uh, has been uh, uh, evolved significantly in myeloma with several CAR T cells uh, uh, being used. And this is uh, uh, a phase one, two study uh, with uh, the CAR T2 study, uh, which shows that uh, there is uh, a very high response rate. Uh, a significant number of patients achieved uh, a complete uh, response uh, and also uh, uh, some, several patients achieved uh, a minimal residual disease uh, uh, negative status. Uh, the, uh, another trial with uh, another compound, the BB21217, uh, again uh, showed a very significant number 
uh, of responses. Response appear to be uh, correlated with the dose of CAR T cells, uh, and also uh, this uh, was also associated with an improved progression-free survival. Uh, the KARMA trial uh, is another study which, again, established uh, the activity of uh, CAR T cells in the treatment of myeloma and also established the most appropriate dose and uh, also showed uh, that uh, the cytokine release syndrome uh, was present, uh, but uh, significant cytokine release syndrome grade three or more was seen in 5.5% uh, of the patients. And now uh, there are uh, other combinations uh, uh, with uh, uh, combi combinations of bispecific uh, BCMA and uh, CAR T cells, which uh, show promise. Uh, to conclude, uh, lenalidomide based uh, combinations are used uh, for uh, extensively for the treatment of patients with relapsed refractory myeloma. Uh, but since uh, lenalidomide and daratumumab uh, go uh, up to the front line, uh, we need to have combinations that are more uh, active in this setting. Uh, and uh, we have uh, pomalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone, which is approved. Daratumumab, calfizumab, and dexamethasone with promising results. Uh, other combinations of pomalidomide with calfizumab or daratumumab, and also antibody drug conjugates and selinexor. Uh, and the immunotherapy approach with CAR T cells bites and novel monoclonal uh, antibodies are very uh, encouraging. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention.